Our scripture reading is a familiar one that sets the tone for the morning. morning. Luke chapter 2. I'll read it from, there are many different translations, and I looked for uh, one I wanted to read from and went, came right back to our New Revised Standard Version this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through, we'll stop at verse um, 15. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bonds of cloth, bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. Here ends the reading. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, the unwrapping has begun. We are in our second week of Advent, and I have already had the pleasure of unwrapping some Christmas gifts. On Friday night, your staff gathered at uh, our home, the manse, for our annual Christmas party. And after a great dinner, we gathered around the fireplace and had what we call a white elephant gift exchange. You know, the kind where everyone brings a gift of some kind, and you draw numbers to see who chooses first. And then the next person can either steal your gift or select an unwrapped one. It's fun to watch people select the gift that looks the most interesting on the outside and then slowly unwrap it. Everyone anxiously waits to see, is it going to be silly or something really nice? And there were both kinds on Friday night. There was a beautiful cake cutter set and an olive oil set. But then it went from the sublime to the ridiculous, and I came home, I came home with these. (laughs) A set of deer antlers, I don't know what I was gonna make, Uh, Elizabeth said, put it in your man cave downstairs, so okay, that's maybe in the garage. (laughs) Advent unwrapped is is the theme for our season of anticipation. And last week, we began the unwrapping and unwrapped the gift of hope. And now in our second week, we unwrap the special gift of Advent peace. Earlier, we lit the candle of peace. The second verse of our opening hymn this morning spoke of Advent peace. He brings God's rule, O Zion. He comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom and justice, truth and love. Sounds a little like Superman, truth, justice, and the American way. In the classic story from Luke 2, a host of heavenly angels announces the birth with these words, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. Peace and goodwill, peace and freedom, peace and justice. What is Advent peace? In fact, what is peace? Philosophers have had better luck describing peace by comparing it to what it is not. Einstein said, peace is not merely the absence of war, 
but the presence of justice, of law, of order, in short, of government. Gandhi said, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the ability to cope with it. And Martin Luther King echoed the words of the hymn we sang earlier when he said, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. All these thinkers start with what peace is not. It is not just the absence of war, although that is a very good start, is it not? One of my favorite Christmas songs is Happy Christmas, War is Over by John Lennon. It was written as the end of the Vietnam War was in sight. Peace is partly the absence of war, but it is so much more. There are many kinds of peace. There's peace that comes at the end of war and conflict, but there's also the peace that comes with a gentle snowfall. There's peace that comes after resolving interpersonal conflict or emerging from a season of despair. So just what is Advent peace? Is it the peace of food and family and fireplace? Is it the inner peace that comes with meditation? Is it the spiritual peace that comes with reflecting on the promise of Emmanuel, God with us? The answer is yes to all of the above. And Advent peace is something different for each one of us, depending on our need. So what is Advent peace for you this year? I don't know. You need to unwrap it for yourself, but it is there. You may find it in family and friendship. You may find it as you work for justice. You may find it as you learn about the places that need peace in our world. You may find it as you work to stop violence of all kinds. You may find it as you meditate or go for a long walk on a winter evening. Well, one place I know where we all find Advent peace is with our children. Somehow they know what Advent is all about. It is a time of excitement and anticipation. Sure, they look forward to the unwrapping presents part, but don't we all? So let us begin to unwrap the gift of Advent peace this week with the help of our children as they once again present to us the story of Christmas, as only children can. And in the words of another John Lennon song, let's give peace a chance. Amen. 